Hi guys, welcome back to Iron Horse Weekly. I've been very rough these last couple of weeks, um, especially this last week. I've got some sort of an infection in my jaw. Um, I don't know if it's an abscess or if it's a tooth or whatever. Been back and forth to the doctors and they've said they don't know. So unfortunately, this week's video isn't going to be very creative in terms of running sessions and clickbaity nonsense and all this lot. I'm just going to talk to you about what I believe to be a set of circumstances which would lead you to believe that modelling a certain era is easier and cheaper than modelling another one. Now, which eras do I have in mind? Well, firstly, if you're going to model modern era like I do, you need to be ready for paying the bills, unfortunately. They are quite easily the most expensive models to buy and yes they are more high fidelity or whatever you but let's face it it quite clearly costs more to make something like a, I don't know what have I got to hand so we've got a Bachman M08 wagon here this was the best part of 45 quid and it's essentially it's just a longer version of like an MHA wagon or something like that which you can get from a curious scale for about 25 quid in there three packs if you will but this is very very common on the railways today especially for the sort of modeling which I do which is mostly engineering works and infrastructure jobs and things like that now the good thing about running those sorts of trains is that they are very small and if you look at Leslie Gilpin's videos he does a lot of filming up at Carlisle and you see a lot of trains going from Basford Hall and Carlisle Yard that are run by Network Rail and I think some DRS stuff for the nuclear trains and a couple of DB Schenker ones. Some of the trains are quite long as you would expect but sometimes they will come from the yard with just one or two wagons and for modelling that's fantastic so whilst the models themselves and I'm talking about rolling stock here not, not locomotives, Lo locomotives are expensive it's as simple as that. Even a little model class 08 now from Hornby will cost you about 160 quid. The Batman ones are 120 quid ish. Um, class 37 from a Curious scale, 170 quid. So this is the world we're living. Locomotives are expensive. Moving on from that quickly, shall we? But it's the rolling stock which is the the key the key feature now. If you're running a modern image layout like I am, and you want to do it on a, a budget or keep it a little bit more pocket friendly, then really do consider running things like engineer strains. My layout is six foot long. Yes, you can connect it together to the other layouts that I'm building, but in data operation, it's just one single layout, one board, six foot by just under two foot, 18 inches, I think. And it's been designed so that there's just enough room in the run around to hold two or three wagons and the loco at each end. And the idea of it is, is I can still run prototypically length modern image engineers trains without having to worry about it not looking quite right. Yes, you are always going to have to deal with compression in, in modern railways unless you're like Pete Waterman and the railroads lads and you can just put your modern railway in a cathedral which is really handy and fantastic. If you do that then you can do some really mad stuff and look fantastic but for the rest of us mere mortals then six foot is about about right really but you can still do it another way to get into model railways and and keep it pocket friendly is to model an older era and take advantage of the 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 abundance if you will of all the stock on the uh, on the market at the minute so for example if you were to model pre-1970 pre-1960 up until about 1900 the rolling stock you're going to get from that will look something like this so here you go so you've got your batman vans you can get these from dapol Hornby, or whatever and i'll just put a simple bit of weathering on there nice simple weathering on these but again I, you can get these from as little as, as a 10 pounds 10 quid you know what I mean? not like that same thing with a comfort wagon again if you look hard enough these are the batman ones so these are the slightly higher quality ones but you can get them for again about a tenner there enough. Newer ones are going to cost you a lot more. If you go to Dapple, they do some um, pre-built ones, but not painted. 
So if you're going to weather them, or make your own, if you don't mind getting um, transfers and things, you can save a bit more money doing things that way. Just to recap so far, if you're going to do a modern image but want to save money, consider making it a, an engineering type work so you can have small trains, which means less outlay on rolling stock. Or you can model something from the pre-90s, 50s, 60s, even steam era, and just buy a lot of second-hand stock. Even now, in today's world of £50 brake vans, which I, I can scarcely believe I'm saying, but you can still find a good old-fashioned Hornby or Batman tour brake van for about 20 quid, which is probably as cheap as you're going to find them. You can get some really, really old ones on eBay, but the wheels are massive. So then you're going to have to rewheel them to make them run on modern track, unless you're running Cobalt on the track. But then you're going to have to spend £10 on a set of wheels. And all of a sudden your eight quid wagon has cost you 20 quid anyway, and you've had to do work and things. Now if you want to do that and you want to model things and upgrade them yourself because that's part of the hobby, then fine, yeah, that, that works really well. It's something I've done myself with a couple of our locomotives and wagons. I've taken a, a, a basic model and I've made piping for it and things like that, or I've got a, 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 a detail set from somewhere like Westall Wagon Works and I've updated an old wagon or an old locomotive, something like that. And I've made it look a bit more swish. And that's another good way that you can save money, getting an older or damaged model and updating it slightly yourself, just being clever. You can use things that old, like wire, you use a little bit of wire Cut it down, paint it, and that they make perfect brake pipes. You know what I mean? So you know what I mean? If it's you, you, if it's double O gauge you're doing, which most people do. I mean, you can even do it with N gauge and TT gauge and whatever. It just depends on the thickness of the wire. But from what you call operating distance, a bit of wire hanging out from the front will look just like a, a vacuum pipe or a brake pipe or um, ETS pipe, something like that. So you get the point. Get yourself a little pin vice drill as well, something like this. So a nice and small hand drill and you can drill into anything and make the holes the right size. So upgrading old models is another good way of saving a few pennies. That all said, which would be the cheapest era to actually model? So we're taking into account everything now. We're taking into account what the second hand market's like, what the new market's like. What sort of infrastructure you're going to have to build on your layout. Looking at newer, newer model releases, newer tool models versus how many old models there are on the market for that particular era. So with all those things in mind, it, if you actually look at it and spend a bit of time, there's not much in it, but you'll find that it's actually cheaper to run Steam era. I mean, do it now. Go on eBay, go on YouTube, go on, go on YouTube. You're already on YouTube. Go on eBay, go on Google, go to Hattons, go to Rails of Sheffield, go to your local model shop and you will find, I can guarantee you, you will find a plant wagon for under a tenner. Simple as that. I I mean, I think Rails of Sheffield do a, a, a mixed bundle thing on their eBay page. You go onto that and they send you 10, was it 10? Five or 10 random wagons for 30 quid. Plus a lot of the local model shops, they'll all have deals on bargains. You can walk in, they'll have like a bin, and you can pick up second-hand models. But you'll notice that all of them, near enough, are from the Steam era. But I found that that seems to be the common theme, is anything from that sort of era does tend to yield cheaper, more attainable models. Okay, I mean, let's face it, it's going to cost you less money to build a plant wagon than it is to build something like... As nice as this JPA is, it's a beautiful wagon and a little bit of stuff for weathering on it as well has gone a long way to make it look nice. But that is a big wagon with a lot of detail parts on there and that is just, it is going to cost more because it's bigger anyway, even though in terms of materials used to build the damn thing. So if you want to start out in more railways or you want to switch areas or save a bit of money, you can either do a modern image and have small trains or you can run things from the steam era and have trains as long as you want but you, you're gonna have to really do some looking and dig out those bargains they are still out there so do keep looking for them right i've talked to you long enough 
I am in a lot of pain. I'm very tired. I've not slept all week, guys. There will be a, a there'll be a better video next week, hopefully, provided this bloody thing has sorted itself out. Until then, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for all your comments as well. I really appreciate it. It's been superb. Um, thanks for those of you that have messaged me asking if I'm all right. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. But until next week, guys, take care, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye now.